Matthew Cashin here, Cashin Fishing Rods. And guys, we're here with Bass University TV. And we go all around the country, and the one question we get asked more than anything is, how do you select the right rod? What makes a fast action different than a mod fast? What makes a medium heavy backbone different than a heavy backbone? What makes a worm jig rod different than a flipping rod? And guys, that's one question that I really enjoy because I get to geek out. It's all about the details, and at Cash and Rods, we are all about the details. That's what matters so much to us. Uh, so, when you are looking for the right rod, and you're looking through your selection, it can be overwhelming, so it's definitely best to keep it simple for sure. There's a couple of rods that you do need in your, your arsenal. The first rod that is gonna be most versatile that everybody needs is that seven foot, fast, medium, heavy, to do everything with, for cashing, it's an M8437, seven foot, fast, medium, heavy. So this is our worm, worm jig selection. So what makes it a worm jig rod? We build it on what's called a mag bass blank, or mandrel. And we've got a lot of wraps and the carbon fiber at the butt, and then it tapers down in the action where we don't have as many wraps at the tip when we're building this blank. So in building a blank, you start with a carbon fiber pre-preg, it's like a paper consistency, and then you're just wrapping that over a steel mandrel. For a mag bass blank, we've got five, six, seven wraps of that carbon fiber at the butt, and then we're tapering it down to the tip where we might only have three or so wraps. And what that does is it's gonna give you the action in the tip area, where that tip's only gonna bend in the first you know, probably 16 to 18 inches, and then you get the backbone. Then you get the backbone, and that's what you need for setting the hook. That's why we call it a worm jig, because a lot of times you're using those single hook baits. You know, Texas rig, a jig, anything like that, where you've got to lay the lumber and you need that backbone, but you also have that tip that loads up really well for skipping any of those type applications. Okay, crankbait rod. What makes the difference in a worm jig versus a crankbait rod? All right, crankbait, we're actually gonna have very similar amount of material all the way through up. So we might start with five wraps at the butt of the carbon fiber, and then we're gonna go up to the tip, which might go down to four, so it's actually a little bit straighter all the way up. It doesn't taper down as much as that mag bass, and that gives you a little bit slower action at the tip, meaning it's gonna bend more throughout the blank. You don't have as much whippy tip action. It's gonna load up all the way throughout the blank, and what that gives you is those good sweeping hook sets where you're not ripping hooks out of the fish's mouth with those treble hook type baits. Also loads up very well where you can take your time a little bit slower on the cast, and you can absolutely launch it if you'll wait for that bait to load up properly. So that's your crankbait rod. All right. Then we've got our spinning rods, and we build a lot of our spinning rods, and our most popular ones are on our P-series blanks. It's gonna be the P8447S, which is a seven foot fast, medium, heavy, and what this is, this is almost an extra fast taper where you start out wider at the butt and then it tapers down to really narrow at the tip. And I hope we can see this, but this tip has just got a lot of action. That tip is just really, really fast where it loads up really, really good, really fast tip, meaning it's in within the first 12 to 14 to 16 inches. And that's gonna load up well, especially if you're skipping smaller baits, uh, throwing Ned rigs, uh, throwing Senkos, anything like that. It's gonna load up really, really well, but then it does turn to backbone. Then you've got that backbone that loads up and you can get a hook in them, uh, drive that hook home. Okay, meat stick, all right, flipping rods. Now this is, this is what gets me excited. I really enjoy flipping because that's the hand-to-hand -hand combat. But building a flipping rod, Essentially, you are starting with more material. That's what makes it, and you build it on a wider mandrel. So you're rolling that carbon fiber over a larger surface area. You have a larger outer diameter, and that's gonna give you more power uh, in, the, in the layers and the carbon fiber pre-preg. 
So you've got more layers and wraps and you're going to go all the way up the blank with that mandrel and you've got just a few less at the tip. So you've still got a larger diameter at the tip, uh, meaning you've got more power basically all the way throughout the blank. That's why you can have those just bone jarring hook sets where you rear down and you've got braid on there and you've got to have a lightning fast reaction and that solid powerful blank transfers the energy faster from into the line getting it into the uh, fish's mouth. So these are just a few examples of different rod models uh, that, that you might go and you might wonder well why do I need a flipping stick or why do I need a worm jig rod can't they be used for all but these are just a couple of, of different applications that are used and why you need to select and have something that is specific for your targeted technique. All right, so in choosing a rod, another major selection is going to be the handle configuration. All right, with Cashin, we go with a split grip handle, which means you basically have a spacer. You have what we call a rear grip, which is going to be directly behind the reel seat where you're just attaching the reel. We've got this rear grip, which is a three inch rear grip. In Cashin, we, we make our own carbon fiber grips. Then you've got bare blank. And on this one, we've got a decal. It's a chatterbait rod, but we've got a decal that we've epoxied over. And then you have the butt grip. So why do we have the split grip? Really, it's to cut down on weight. Uh, anytime you've got less material, you're gonna cut down on weight. And also, it gives you an opportunity for blank to hand contact, which is always a good thing for feeling those vibrations, any type of sensitivity. All right. So different models. Flipping stick, you want leverage, right? You are, you are flipping, uh, you know, you're working the bait, you might be switching a little bit, but when it's time to drive the hook home, you need leverage, right? So flipping models, we're gonna have a little bit longer handle. Uh, we're calling it behind the reel seat to the butt, a little bit longer handle to give you more leverage. Uh, for this, this is our chatterbait rod. A lot of times you might be roll casting with this. You can do some two-handed casting with this. So it's gonna have just a slightly shorter handle, uh, but it still needs to feel good. It just needs to feel good where it sits right, where you've got your thumb right there uh, on the reel, but it feels good where it sits right there and you're comfortable with that. You know, last thing you wanna do is just keep jabbing yourself in the side all day long. That's never very comfortable. Um, crankbait rods, a lot of our crankbait rods and even our Carolina rig rod for cashing, we go with really long handles because you're throwing that out, you got a two-handed cast, you need as much leverage, but then the comfort too, a lot of times you're gonna tuck and wind, especially those bigger uh, crankbaits are gonna dig, and boy, they can absolutely wear you out if you are not comfortable sitting here working that bait. So the handle configuration is one of the, the first questions we get asked a lot of, uh, why do I need this handle configuration or can you do this for me? And at Cashin, we are blessed to make our products in North Carolina, which we're very proud of, but that gives us the opportunity to customize. If you're interested in customizing, it's pretty easy to move this where we can move it up or back to suit you because ultimately it's about getting you the right rod that you're gonna be more comfortable with and you're gonna have more success with it. Another question we get asked all the time are what's the difference in the models? At Cashin, we start with our John Cruz Signature Series, which is our upper end rod. Then we have our Elite Series and then we have our CRT Series. What makes the difference in those rod lines? Well, starting with the John Cruz Signature Series, these are all very technique specific. This is our square bill rod, all right? And John, this, this rod took the longest to design, but we designed all new blanks to, mit, to fit these applications. Uh, and John was very, very specific about the actions, the powers, the handle lengths, everything that went into this. We designed all new blanks to go around that and target those specific uh, techniques. The Elite Series uses the same carbon fiber prepreg that we use in the John Cruz Signature Series. We just have a lot more models that are gonna be uh, designed for versatility. So this is gonna be an intermediate modulus carbon fiber. It's gonna be great for sensitivity, great for the durability. Uh, it's just a great all around blank and epoxy resin system that's gonna give you the ultimate in impact resistance because ultimately that's how rods break is you're going down the lake at 70 miles an hour and this rod's sitting over the side of your boat chattering the entire time. 
you need that impact resistance and that's built into the blank in the carbon fiber prepreg. But that's going to give you the sensitivity of that modulus where the vibrations can travel down this. Essentially this works like a lightning rod. Those harmonics travel down the rod blank so you've got to feel it down here. It's about getting it from the line to the guides to the blank to your fingertips. That intermediate modulus is going to let it travel down. With our Elite Series we go with all micro guides. A lot of rods will have 11 guides. Some models might have 10 guides on it, just depends on the specific application. Micro guides, they harness the energy of the line. So if you've ever seen the line coming off a reel, it wants to go side to side right here as the spool winder, the leveler goes out and comes back. Well, these micro guides actually harness that energy where you're not wasting energy out here on the outside of the blank. It stays in the plane of the blank. So you're going to get further casting because of energy conservation in the, the direction that you're pointing. Plus you get so many more guides on the rod, it makes it a lot more sensitive because that's where your sensitivity comes from or those line to guide contact points. And with our micro guide rods, you get so many more contact points uh, for it. CRT series, we go with a little bit lower standard modulus carbon fiber blank. So this is just a little bit lower modulus uh, prepreg that we're using to roll these blanks. So what that means is you have to put a little bit more material in the blank to make it as strong and uh, the modulus isn't as high, it's not going to be quite as sensitive as our intermediate modulus products. But the CRT, we are still so proud to make these. We make them in Sanford, North Carolina with the cash and carbon fiber grips. Uh, on the bait casting CRTs, we go with a little bit bigger guide for those guys who might be apprehensive on the micro guides and might want a, some knot clearance or anything like that. Um, but we are still very proud to make those CRT line in North Carolina. Very proud of that rod line. And we don't have as many models. We keep it pretty simple in the CRTs. Your seven foots, your six six, your seven six, and just a few selections in each technique category. Worm jig, flipping, cranking, spinning, spinner bait. And then also we have a kayak series rod. We get asked all the time, what makes a kayak series rod? We build our kayak series on our CRT platform, meaning we're using the standard modulus carbon fiber prepreg to roll the blanks, carbon fiber grips, but they have a little bit shorter handle from behind the reel seat. And what that is, when you've got your life jacket on and you're sitting here and you're paddling around, moving around, you need some pliability and some flexibility where that's not getting hung on everything. It's not getting hung on the life jacket. Very annoying. Also, we go with a guide, our, our American Tackle Microwave Guides, which are going to help with your casting distance, but also they have a insert that does not come out. So these inserts are guaranteed to stay in for the life of the guide, and that just increases your durability. Thank you for the opportunity to share with you. Again, this is just something that I geek out on. I really enjoy the molecular level of rod design and the materials that go into this. Uh, we thank you for your time and just this is just a little bit of information that goes into hopefully helping you select your next rod. Of course at Cash and Rods we would love to answer any questions and we would love for your next rod to be a Cash and Rod but that's the beauty about it. There are so many rod selections out there and there's so many good rod companies out there that you as the consumer win because you get the opportunity to find the right rod for you if you'll take a little bit of time, do your research, and of course a rod is a very personal choice where you got to go out, put your hands on it, uh, get personal recommendations. Uh, it's just something that always feels good in your hand and you'll know the right rod when you feel it.